Welcome to Lotus Health Education and Wellness Empowerment Through Health Enlightenment. This is the next installment in our advanced lipid panel video where we're going to be talking a bit about the additional components to your lipid molecule, specifically our apolipoprotein B or ApoB and our lipoprotein A or LP little a. We're also going to talk in today's video about some of the inflammatory markers and also some of the additional labs that we look at that show how our body is responding in an effort to try and heal the damage that's being done as we continue to progress through cardiovascular disease, specifically ASCVD and the plaque that's building up in our major arteries leading up to potentially events that we track using the advanced lipid panel and additional testing. Remember, if you're not already subscribed to our videos, to hit that subscribe button and also like today's video so that you can get more great content. If you have questions or feedback, we always love to hear from you in the comment section below. And of course, remember to take a look at the description below today's video so you can get great information about the references we've used, resources, as well as some additional information about the content that we cover in today's video. So let's jump into the next section of our advanced lipid panel in the video today. So moving away now from the particle number, size, and the overall pattern of the particles, we're gonna take a step back to the cholesterol molecule itself and take a look at the next things that we get reported on an advanced lipid panel and talk about your apolipoprotein B and your lipoprotein A or LP little a as they are called. Your apolipoprotein B or ApoB as you can see it on the screen in the most basic sense, and we're just keeping it, you know, very high level here to give you an idea of how the advanced lipid panel works and the different things that we look at, your apolipoprotein B is helping us understand how the cholesterol is transported around in your body. On the cholesterol molecule, on the inside, you'll find fats and the things that make up the more problematic component of your cholesterol panel, whether you're talking about your basic lipid panel or this advanced panel that we're talking about today. But on the exterior of your cholesterol particle or that molecule in your body are these little associated structures. The ApoB helps us understand how the cholesterol, as it's being transported through your body, how likely you are to have a buildup of cholesterol and end up with these plaques and the problematic components to your cholesterol panel. If we look back at our friend, the cross section of the artery, we will see that you have in the advancing stages where the plaque is building up as we move from a healthy artery now to the early disease where the inflammation is starting and then go to that advancing stage, ApoB is associated with that because with the plaque buildup that we start seeing there, that is where, as well as the calcium buildup that we will eventually also see, ApoB plays a very important part in that buildup of this problematic substance, this plaque within your vessel. And so this is again where understanding the cross section of your blood vessel and what we're measuring, that helps to understand for us as your healthcare team, what is going on inside of your blood vessel. So this is why that basic lipid panel may not necessarily tell us everything, understanding additional components of your cholesterol like the ApoB is gonna help us to understand, okay, this patient has a high ApoB at this point, there's a very good likelihood that somewhere in their heart, which we can tell through things like a coronary artery calcium score or certain types of images that we take of your heart where we take a look to see if there's blockages, having those lab values along with those other tests tell us on your cardiovascular team what exactly is happening inside of your blood vessel, both in pictures as well as in numbers. So when we see that you have a high ApoB, which you can see the reference value here that a lot of the laboratories use, then we can tell, okay, with this buildup of plaque now, there is something going on in this patient's arteries that we need to be concerned about. And from there, we can coach you on things like the diet that would be helpful, certain things like exercise or other parts of your routine that need to be adjusted. And when it becomes absolutely necessary, things like supplements and medications. 
Along with the ApoB, we mentioned another thing called your LP little a. The LP little a, again, in its most simplistic sense, tells us how sticky the cholesterol within your body is going to be. So again, you have this bigger cholesterol molecule. It's got fats and things inside of it. It's got some ApoB on the outside, and then attached to it is going to be an additional structure, which is what we're looking at with this LP little a. In our next video, where we talk a little bit about interventions that we can make with diet, exercise, and also supplements and medications specific to this, we'll take a little bit closer look at the LP little a, because knowing this number also helps us understand in certain cases, the types of, if it's necessary, medications that could be beneficial for you. So your LP little a tells us about the stickiness of the cholesterol that's floating around in your body. And the higher that LP little a is again in the most simplistic sense tells us the likelihood that you have cholesterol that is sticky enough to be building up inside of your arteries all over your body and causing these blockages so again this is not something that we would normally be able to tell from a basic lipid panel and another reason why having that value of your ApoB and LP little a is helpful for us as your healthcare team to understanding what is going on with your cardiology uh, status in your body. You heard in the beginning of the video, I also mentioned that with your cardiac issues, whether it is ASCVD or certain other issues that we see with patients' hearts over time, we're not just looking at the buildup of these substances, which is what most of us think of. When you say heart attack to most patients, they think immediately of something blocking their heart, which is very true as we saw with the cross section of the artery. However, inflammation, like I mentioned, is a huge component to the disease in and of itself. And again, that disease being ASCVD, which is the plaque buildup and the stiffening and changes in your vessels that can lead to heart attack and or stroke. How we mark what's going on from an inflammatory standpoint and your immune system reacting, because if you think about when you cut yourself, and a day later, you might look at the cut and there's some inflammation there. That is your immune system responding to that cut and what's going on at that site, the damage that's being caused. That inflammation is part of the healing process. It's your body attempting to fix something that's happening and it shouldn't be happening to you. The same thing goes on in your heart. So there are certain things that your body does as that inflammation begins occurring from the things that we eat or things we expose ourselves to that cause your immune system to react and begin sending structures that may not normally be there around your heart to the heart and the surrounding vessels and structures to try and stop or heal that inflammation or that damage, I should say, that's happening and the inflammation that's occurring. So the two other markers that you can see here where we talk about inflammation and your body reacting to things are the high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP, which is something that we look at as a marker of the inflammatory process and your body trying to respond to inflammation and damage that's going on. So again, you see a threshold here. We want that to be low. The higher we see that HSCRP is for us as your healthcare team, a red flag to us that something is going on with your body and it is responding to damage that is going on. Typically where we see this is that calcium buildup where your artery is now becoming vulnerable from our cross section of the artery picture. We will see the HSCRP playing an active role in that component of the process that's going on in your body. The other marker that we look at here is this other one, LPPLA2, which is the lipoprotein associated phospholipase A2. I have to sit there and make sure I tell you the whole acronym properly, which essentially is telling us as your healthcare team, if you have inflammation that is now activated an immune response, when you get substances like bacteria or other things that could be potentially harmful in your body, your body releases these things called macrophages, which are cells that normally float around and help your immune system by 
essentially responding, taking up things, swallowing them and trying to help your body deal with things that should not normally be in your system. Your body tries to differentiate between all of these different things that's happening, whether it's a bacteria or a virus or something that goes into your system, or in this case, inflammation that's being prompted by something that's happening with your heart. When your immune system gets activated from what's going on with your heart and the surrounding structures, your immune system will also release these same macrophages that normally help to address infections and other things that may be going on with your body. Those same structures respond to that inflammation and the process happening with your heart and attempt to help address it. So we look at that particular marker, your LP, PLA2, as a way of telling whether your immune system is responding and again, the state of all of that inflammation going on in your heart and the likelihood that you are trending towards having a heart attack, stroke, or just in general, having concerns that we need to really sit down and have a deep conversation with you as the patient about in order to address the lab values that we see. And again, there is a threshold that you can see here where we wanna keep it below that threshold. Once you go above that, we know that there is something very serious going on that we really wanna make sure we pay attention to. So that's another part of our content for the advanced lipid panel and some of the things that we look at when we run this test on you as our patient to provide information on how exactly to manage your particular condition based upon the results that we receive. We hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, again, remember to give us a like and to subscribe to the content. And remember to come back here to our channel to look out for the comprehensive video that's gonna bring together all of these different sections on the advanced lipid panel into one total video that will give you everything all in one time. So we look forward to seeing you back here and get more information and content from us so that you can have empowerment through health enlightenment. Join us again here on Lotus Health Education and Wellness. And remember that while we appreciate all of the trust that you place in us, today's video, as with all of them, is informational in nature. And we still encourage you very much to talk to your healthcare team to make all of the decisions that's right for you based on your particular health condition. Thanks again for joining us. And we hope to see you back here soon at Lotus Health Education and Wellness. Take care.